This is Jim Vaglica, and this is the American Grit After Action Report, Episode 8. So this um, evolution is called Barricade the Bunker. And, I mean, you know what the whole deal is. Let me tell you this. The names were chosen from a bag. So it was, all right, who's going to barricade for Team Red? Boom. Cam. Okay, that leaves me to breach. And then it was, all right, what team is going to breach which bunker? Boom. You pull the color out. That's how it was chosen. I really wanted to barricade. I felt like I could build a barricade no one could get in. But it wasn't to be. Uh, Cam was not real confident about being able to barricade. And me and Cam, no, me and, and Nick were like walking him through the whole process. We have a half hour. You have no idea how fast that goes. We were hammering Cam. Not this here. Tie this here. Grab that. Boom, boom. We, we basically were just on him the whole half hour. We're done. I felt pretty good. I thought we, um, I thought we did a decent job. And now it's my turn to breach. And I have to breach uh, the blue teams. And Hayes was the barricader. And Rourke really uh, was on her about how to do this, how to set it all up. And he was all about spending, spending time getting those little, uh, they were like O-rings with, with a, a threaded um, nut, you know. And, and if you could spin that down tight, those were a real bitch to get off. And, and one thing that he spent a ton of time on was the doorknob. So... Put a chain real tight around the doorknob. Put one of those rings on there. Get that tight. Pull it super tight. Anchor it up high on the corner. So tight that that, that door was not going to move. My strategy for attacking that bunker was I'm going to attack the bottom right. I'm just going to make space on the bottom right enough for me to get in. I, I loosened it up, and then you saw me, I was pulling on the whole thing like a, like a rabid chimpanzee, trying to loosen everything up, and I was actually the first one in at the door, okay, so I turned the knob, I was able to open it like a couple of inches, and I thought about just shouldering the thing to break it, but they told us you can't break anything. This isn't about breaking down the barricade, it's about taking it apart, okay? So after I realized, you know, um, let me attack the anchor portion up high. That wasn't working. I went back to the door. I tried to get that off, but, but you know, my hands are frozen. They're wet. Um, I'm loaded with adrenaline. What happens, one of the side effects of adrenaline is you lose fine motor skills. And, and this is fine motor skills. So... You, you don't, I didn't really have the dexterity that I needed. And Tony was in like in five minutes. Um, Mario was actually right behind Tony. And then I would say I was in third. Claire was like left in the dust. She barely made a dent in, in Tony's barricade. Um, actually, when you see Mario grab the pole and fall down, he thought he won. That's how close it was. And then when he was told Tony was in before him, you know, and then like their whole team was just, just like a real kick in the gut. Um, anyway, so Tony's the winner. You know what? If someone had to win besides us, 
I was glad it was Tony. Uh, on a personal level, not not on uh, not on a, a competition team level. Um, Tony deserved a win and um, a day off. Anyway, when we were all walking out of the woods, you know, heading back to base camp, Tony grabbed me and he said, uh, I want to I wanna give away my, my prize. I want to give my uh, family visit to Hayes. And I said, you know, grab the producers. Let them know. I bet you they would love that. And, and that's, uh, that's what happened. So I kind of had an idea that Tony's sister wasn't coming in the door. Um, so yeah, so, all right, we jump ahead. Uh, Cena says, all right, Tony, here's your prize. And, you know, Hayes' dad walks in the door. And... Let me clear something up. You know, some people think that, like, my eyes were watering or something after that. Well, let me tell you, the, the pollen count was so high that day. All right, enough said. Let's just move on. Um, all right, so we're going to choose circus. And both me and Cam are eligible because K-Joy went, went home last week. And it was a toss-up. I didn't know who Nick was going to choose. So uh, we're choosing um, at base camp this day because the weather was so bad outside, they thought a tree was going to fall on us or something. Um, uh, Goldie gets chosen. Goldie has proven herself in the circus twice. And... She's tough. If, if, if the endurance event it doesn't really go against her strengths, then she's probably going to come out on top. Now, um, Cam gets chosen, right? Cam's a professional wrestler. He's a performer. And he has things planned out already. So he had this plan. No one knew it. But he, he's got this whole speech planned out if he gets chosen. So he's chosen. He goes up there, right? He's ready. Cena's got another idea. I think Cena was sick of Cam being so goofy, right? So Cena's like, Cam, I think it's time for you to get mad. Can you get mad? And Cam goes into his predetermined speech Every circus needs a clown. That's me. And everyone's like, what just happened? Did that just happen? It was just like this awkward silence, right? And afterwards, we all laughed our asses off. But at the time, it was just baffling. Anyway, Noah's turn to choose, and like the last person I thought Noah would send up there was the Lumber Yak, because he's like their VIP. He looks big and goofy. The dude is an amazing athlete. There's nothing he can't do. But, all right, so... Circus is done. We all go into our rooms. And I go in the room with Cam and Nick. And I'm like, pump, right? And, and Nick's like, don't get cocky. And I'm like, I'm not cocky. I'm just confident. Here's the way I see it. You've got the giant lumberjack. And you've got uh, little Goldie, okay? There's no way that whatever this endurance event is going to be, there's no way that it's going to play to both of their strengths. One of them is going to is going to suck it at this event. And then there's Cam right in the middle. So there was no way in my mind that Cam was going to lose this, whatever it was. Um, and then Olsina also says that 
here's a curveball. Your cadre is not going to be involved in this circus. And I want to tell you a little behind the scenes piece. Jim, right, um, kind of thought of myself as uh, an associate producer. And I said to the producers, listen, if, if we can't have the cadre, how about if the competitor chooses a teammate to stand in as the cadre? And they liked the idea, and they went with it. Then we get to circus, right? And they say, all right, yeah, your, your, your coach is going to stand up on stage where they generally stand. And I'm like, what, what good is that? The coach should be down on the stage like a cadre would. And I'm up there, I'm, I'm, I'm standing next to Cena, and I say, John, what's the deal? We should be down there. And he says, I think you're right. And he takes a walk, he goes down, he grabs a director, and they're going back and forth. The director's like, no, we can't do that, we can't do that. And Cena's like, yeah, we can do it, and we will. And that's exactly what happened. I am responsible for putting the coaches down on the stage. So, all right, uh, the circus um, pretty much went like I figured. Uh, I, I knew Goldie was going to be the last one down. That's just her strategy. She's, she's not going to beat anyone, so just conserve her energy. That's, that's what she does. Um, you know... I had hoped that Cam could beat the Lumberjack, but like I said, he is, I don't know if he's superhuman or subhuman, but he's not human. I'll tell you that much. He's in the lead, and all of a sudden, he's flying through the air, and I'm down the bottom. And I'm watching this big lumberjack ass come flying through the air at me. I was like, what? He, you know, his, his GoPro goes flying off. His, his mic pack flies off. They're both into the woods somewhere. Everyone was like, holy shit, what just happened? Later on, they said, no one ever do that again. Because that was his secret. He was going to do that, but he didn't tell anybody. Crazy, right? Um, anyway, so now these stilts that they need to get on. Uh, as soon as Cam get up there, I knew he was in trouble. It, he just was not steady. The other two were steady. He wasn't concentrating. He was looking everywhere. Afterward, like everyone said, Cam was looking at me. Cam was looking at me. Cam was looking over here. I told him, I said, Kim, look straight ahead. Pick out a branch, a leaf, anything. Concentrate on it. Get in the zone, man. He just could not concentrate. And I don't know how much it had to do with Hayes, but I'm sure she had something to do with it. Anyway, they get up to the highest ones. He's really in trouble. I'm like super nervous because the other two, I'm, I'm, I keep looking back and forth, back and forth. I'm hoping that one of them is going to start to wobble or something. You know what? Goldie, right? She's a, she's a roller skater. She's got strong ankles. Lumberjack, he climbs poles, right? He climbs trees and, and he's, and he's not human. Um, and, and at one point, Cam says, Jim, talk to me. And it just killed me, man, because I knew there was nothing I could say. I tried to talk to him, but there was just nothing I could say. And then the last thing he did was when, when he was shaking so bad, he looked at, at Hayes and he just shook his head like, I'm done. And he fell. And it was, it was, uh, he felt so bad. 
I felt terrible for him. And he, he started, you know, he said, Jim, I'm sorry. And I said, no, no, no. You know, I said, um, you did your best. And I said, go out proud. You know, hold your head up, man. This is, this is your exit scene. Make the most of it. And I think he did. I think he went out with his head up. Um, but that was, uh, that was the end of it. And suddenly I realized that I'm alone. And for some reason, I just never, ever imagined I would be fighting alone on Team Nick. It was, it's, it's just me and Nick now. And man, when I went back to the room, everything was, you know, you got to pack everything before you leave base camp because you don't come back. That's for real. So I come back and I see Maria's space empty. K-Joy's space is empty. Now Cam's space is empty. I'm in this big room all by myself now. Uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make the best of it, you know. Uh, I'm gonna fight. I'm fighting on. Let's see what happens. So now we've got the last two shows coming up, nine and ten, and they're gonna run them back to back. And I believe they're gonna run them as two separate episodes, not just one continuous. But we'll see what happens. And I will see you. Next week, I'm, I'm probably going to do maybe just one after action for the both of them because you're going to watch them both at the same time. But we will see. Um, don't miss this season finale. And by the way, um, the ratings were up on episode 8 by 40%. So that tells me people are not recording this and watching it later. They want to know what happens on that night. So watch it on that night. Let's get the ratings as high as they've ever been. Let's set us up for a season two.